All right, welcome everybody. We are playing another round with uh, Eldrazi Tron. Oh, this is dope. We have two Eldrazi temples, so we can start cranking out some matter reshapers. And we draw a couple more lands. We're gonna play Endbringer pretty quickly, so let's keep this. Thank you, Utri, for the follow. We might want to crank out an endless one on turn one. It kind of depends on what they do turn one. Cinder Glade turn one. What are we playing against? Oh, Thought Nuts here, so good. I think we are going to be pretty busy between Thought Not Seers and Matter Reshapers over the next couple turns, so I think I'm okay playing this Endless One for two, because we're going to be constrained with our mana. Oh, we're playing against Scape Shift. That's fine. If that's the case, I'm happy to have made an Endless One. Oh, we kind of don't want that. Let's go Thought Not Seer. What do we want to take? Probably Prime Time. think search comes out so it's not anger it's not obstinate bay loss it's search for tomorrow or primeval titan i kind of do like stopping them from being able to cast a prime time i'm not 100 percent sure though if we take the search we just slow them down a lot primeval titan is a huge problem I guess I have lots of ways of drawing the Titan because they have the Titans and they also have um, the Green Pact. Yeah, our opponent is stuck on three lands. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So let's deny them mana. Let's bash with this. So this also counts on us, them not drawing more lands and us drawing more lands. But the matter reshapers are good. The problem is that they have Anger of the Gods, and the Matter Shapers are, like, pretty bad against it. Okay, so they burned that one, which is good, because now we can just go Matter Reshaper. We don't really get our Pout Spell Skite. Uh, attack with Thought Not Seer. So they're down that Anger. They still have Prime Town and Bailoth, and they're still missing Land Drop, so one unknown. Steve is fine. Ghost Quarter is also good. Let's attack with both. So they can play Bailoth next turn. Let's go one, two, three, four. Play a matter reshaper. We waste that one mana, but that's fine. And now if we drop a land, we're just gonna go like endbringers into endbringers into endbringers. We've yet to get like activate an endbringer with this deck. We haven't done it. STE is called Steve. Yes. Well, it's a current tribe elder. <laughs> Alright, so they played the Bayloth, and now we still know they have the prime time. They're still missing land drops. Ours's power plant is great. Okay, I think I don't want to attack with Thought Not Seer. Actually, it might be fine. We can attack with all of them. If they want to trade with Thought Not Seer, they get to draw a card, which does get them closer to prime time. I, alternatively, we just like put the Endbringer in play. I'm gonna not attack this turn. Because in a couple of turns, this uh, Endbringer can make it so that this Obstinate Bailoff can't block. Like, next turn, this can uh, make it so that it can't block. It does count on us drawing another land, though, because we want to keep playing Endbringers. Farseek is fine. 
Okay, so prime time's coming down soon. Reality Smasher is sweet. So let's make it so that this can block, play Smasher. We hit for five nine. Oh, that's that's just lethal. No, not attacking is not lose. I just don't want them to get closer to prime time because I think that's the only way we lose. So, target can creature can't attack or block this turn. We make that unable to do that. One, two, three, four, five. This is a great draw. Uh, attack with everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I feel like the way we lose that game probably is if we attack with Thought Not Seer and let them draw another card. They draw a card, they draw an untapped card, an untapped land, and then they play prime time, and then, like, you guys know how this deck does its thing once it has prime time, so I'd rather just not die to nonsense there. Seems like if we can set up a really good attack the following turn by making it unable to block, that's probably just better. Because we're not worried about our life total. Our life total is safe. The downside is that this line ends the game and we're having so much fun this game. What do we want against the... Uh, escape shift deck? Kind of... Basilisk Collar might be fine if we put Basilisk Collar in. Because it puts us out of reach for like Valakut. Yeah. Like, what What could we do otherwise, you know? Basilisk collar? Is that it? All is dust? They don't have that much stuff. They don't really- they, they just have lands and... the titan. I think I'll play the collar and take out- man, the dismembers are really bad. Hey! Quicksilver! Quicksilver Johnny with a first time sub. You guys, can we get some Viper love in chat for this very first arrival? Quicksilver, there's going to be some questions for you in chat. So make sure you answer them to say hello to your fellow snakes and everybody here. Let's so make sure we warmly greet. Um, Quicksilver Johnny for the very first time. Remember, you got to be nice snakes, not mean snakes. Tiles for two stops a lot of ramp. Yeah, it's super slow though. So I'm bringing in the collar and taking out maybe like the dismember and something else can maybe block a, a titan, but spatial contortion will definitely not. Maybe we can bring some relic of progenitus instead of spatial contortions because those don't do anything. Like the dismembers at least kill the Baloths. All right, I'm just bringing some relics just cause they're better than, <laughs> they're definitely, the, the spatial contortions don't do anything. So we are two thirds of the way with Tron on this one. And then we just play some endless ones on three. Although if we tutor for, we might be playing Civ after this, Maximals. I think I'm playing, I might be playing Dead by Daylight. I'm not sure. I want to play a spooky game is what I want to do. Yeah. This hand is kind of garbo. It's like real smelly. I'm gonna mulligan it. Uh, this hand is much better. Don't think I want this. Silver Johnny is watching from San Francisco. Favorite card is LED. Favorite ice cream is cookie dough. That is the best ice cream flavor. Thank you so much for joining us, Quake Silver Johnny. I appreciate your support. Um, should play Temple first in case we draw another Temple so that we can play Thought Not Seer on two. Uh, 
All right, Farseek is fine. And Ringer is also good, so let's just go tower into reshaper. Next turn we can go thought nut seer. Oh, that's unfortunate. At least they didn't ramp though. We might be able to snag something good. Oh, snap. We take the through the breach, I think. Because next turn, if they draw a land, they could just uh, Summoner's Pact get like an Umrakul or a Titan through the breach, and we might just be dead. Anger of the Gods doesn't do anything. Scape Shift is fine, but it doesn't really do anything for a while. They're still on four. You would play Gaia Reach Sanitarium instead of Seagate Wreck Wreckage? Yeah, this is just a list that I got in Avil, but why would you play Gaia Reach Sanitarium? Like, why do we care about just to see more of our deck, you mean? Anyway, I'm gonna take the... Through the Breach, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, they can't... Ep for Emrakul. They'd get Titan, though. So, But I still think I'm supposed to... It's one of the two. It's Summoner's Pactor through the Breach. I'm just not sure which one. How often are we Hellbent? It hasn't happened... ever? I'm gonna take through the Breach. It just gives them enough to draw a Titan and through the reach it. Now if they have to do Summoner's Pact, they have to play it, and then they have to pay for the Pact, and it's gonna be way slower than them just through the Breaching something. So they are gonna Summoner's Pact this turn. To get Swag Tusk. Alright. They're gonna have to pay for that too. Can't really attack into that. Can't really play Endbringer. Alright, so now they have to pay for that. Triggered ability. I kind of don't want to take... I don't want to give him another card. Endbringer can just- oh, Endbringer can't even block the Ragtus very well. I guess I'm supposed to block it. Feels bad, man. But now our Endbringer, they found a land. Alright. Dismember? Wow, that's a nice draw considering we just, uh, <laughs> threw away our Thrag- our Eldrazi for this. Yeah, I can cross off Pact. They still have Scape Shift and Anger of the Gods. You want to finish it off with Anger of the Gods? Is that what they're doing? I'm just going to take the damage. Corsair Crufix. Oh, damn it. With Prime Time on top? That is bad, K. Just don't remind your opponent to draw a card like an eternal weekend. We are dead, aren't we? We're just dobs, right? I guess I should have played my relic and I don't think it's gonna change anything. I feel like we have to draw and see what we get. Cower in the Souls doesn't change anything. <laughs> I'm going to take the wheel. He's not taking any wheels. I guess we're gonna try to attack. I 
Like, we can kill the prime time with Endbringer, Ping, and Dismember. This hits creatures, right? Yeah, so we can kill the prime time, but they are gonna get a battle goods. Oh, I should have done it with a trigger on the stack. Because now the Courser... Oh, I guess it doesn't actually matter. I should actually do it at the end of the turn so that... They can't attack with Courser or Beast. They have an Anger of the Gods in hand, so... One, two... Alright, so we kill that. But we are in such trouble. Gotta go pick up my sister. It's That sounds good, Casper, because we're definitely gonna die here. <laughs> they still have a scape shift in hand. We're just dead to the scape shift. So we gotta not die to the scape shift then. And they have the Valakids in play too. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't really. I have to hold up warping whale, so I'm just gonna ping them for one. Yeah, we do have whale. Okay, so we're actually like. They might be casting two Anger of the Gods to kill the whole board, maybe. We don't know that they're gonna fire off the two boards. The two, the Anger of the Gods. See, we have to counter this, and now we don't know that they're gonna fire off. See, because I thought they were gonna try to go for that kill. Counter this. We need to have these two in play, like, we're not gonna win otherwise. They played Atlantis turn already, didn't they? Thank you, Wahoo Junkie. We are priced into having to block some of this stuff too. Which sucks. We might just take two and then when they anger, if they do anger, then we can finish off the courser. No, they already played a land. I don't- I, we can't win if our second un and bringer dies. I think we have to let this happen. And if they anger now... Summoner's Pact? Fudge. It's a current tribe elder. Yep. That'll do it. If we block Courser and then they just anger and kill both our Embringers, we have no way to win that game. So. I don't think that's a viable option. Yeah, I mean, Pack for Steve is good, and they had two Valakuts out. It's like tutoring six damage. Yes, but if we block the Courser, then they anger the gods. Both of our Endbringers die. We can't let the Thragtoks through, or the Beast through. Then they both die, then we untap, we have nothing in play, we die. Yeah, I think we have to, like, get an Ulamog and, like, kill their Valakuts and 
deal with the fact that our Endbringers were going to die to eventually a couple of Anger the Gods or something. But we needed to have them in play, I think. We're just running it back. You already knew Steve was an ass. <laughs> I would like to play first. This hand's actually quite slow. We don't have Tron and we don't have an Eldrazi land and our first play is a Thought Knot Seer. Person sent me a message, what did they say? The Decisive, indeed. I think I'm gonna mulligan this hand. I think it's pretty slow against this. Oh my gosh, this is somehow worse. I guess if we square a Tron land to the top, it's not. That is great. Valak at turn one. It's not the strongest turn one play from that deck. That's fine. We get Tron next turn and the following turn we play an Endbringer. So we're actually both off to pretty good starts. Nice. We can have Warping Whale up next turn. Tron is online! Yeah, we have Ulamog and we'll be able to blow up both her lands. I think we counter almost anything if we can, if it's a sorcery, because we just want to slow them down, and then if we can just play... The fact that we had another tower in hand is just so brutal. For them. Not for us, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're going to counter this. Wow. The lucky stars aligned for us. Putting a map on top was just the best card we could have put on top. I guess the only thing that would have been better was actually a, the Tron land. We played a Valakut. So we go this and go one, two, three, four. Turn for Ulamog is okay. Do we destroy both Valakuts or the both stomping ground? <laughs> Her opponent. <laughs> Okay, for Ulamog. <laughs> Seems okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess I can't really do very much without the stomping ground, so maybe we just like... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna take them off green. Those Valakuts are so far away from doing anything that's relevant. get to attack with Luma before their opponent concedes one day. <laughs> nah, it's not gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Yeah, usually this is a good matchup for you. The wall game one didn't draw much. Gabby clack, yep. Clackety clack clack clack. <laughs> yeah. was bad. I scribed a map to the top. Otherwise, the hand is like all expensive, all browsing, no way to assemble. Um,
<laughs> Read the fun card opponent. <laughs> Read how fun it is. I don't often get to have like a decent conversation with my opponents on Moto. I feel like a lot of times it's like people rage quitting and whatnot, so. Throwing your Ulamog attack. How much left in your library? Yep. Yeah. They actually have three. They they will die sooner to damage than they would to decking. Although I guess if you had another Trompies in hand, you could have made anti cyan and still turn for Ulamog. Yeah, I was worried to miss playing you. You too. GG's. Nothing feels better than wrecked Valakut. Yeah. Show those Valakut decks what's what. We won the match. Cool. So I am probably going to finish the recording for YouTube right here. As a reminder, we were playing Cult. What is it? Tron. Tron El Jirazi. I like this deck. Thanks for recommending it, Zach. I enjoy it quite a bit. We are currently 4-1 in the league. Maybe we'll get some treasure chests when we finish it. Um, I don't know about that Seagate Wreckage. I guess maybe against control decks you want a Seagate Wreckage, but it didn't seem like it did very much. The one thing that seems kind of clunky is we're not very good at assembling Tron, but I guess uh, all the El Jirazi temples make it better. Because it's not like you're... It's not like Tron, where if you don't assemble Tron immediately, you just kind of die. It's like, you can play a Matter Reshaper, and then you play like a Thought Knot Seer, and then it's like, Ah, oh, we assembled Tron, alright, now let's play Ulamog. So, um, it was fun. I recommend it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this Diving Into Modern. If you would like to see more deck techs and stuff, they are on my YouTube profile. It's youtube.com slash gabbysparts. I also stream live on Twitch, that's where this is being recorded from, which is twitch.tv slash gabbysparts. I stream live there from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. ish. Uh, I hope I get to see you guys there. See ya, YouTube.